What is going on, Jet fans? Matt O'Leary back with another episode of Just Jets, episode 217 of these bad boys. I am excited to get into today's episode as it has been a busy week so far for those New York Jets. New uniforms on Monday, Brock Bowers visits on Monday, Troy Fotanu is visiting today. They had Aaron Rodgers and company report back at the facility. Ah, voluntary workout season and, of course, NFL draft season. And that is going to be the main focus of today's episode. I'm going to give you my New York Jets big board for the first round. My uh, top 10 players that I would want for the New York Jets to draft each in a different scenario. So I'll explain how that's linked out. You might have seen last night. Uh, I'm talking Jets, myself, Ryan Greenbean. We went through our lists. If you want to see their guys' list, uh, you can check it out on last night's episode. But I wanted to go a little bit more in depth on this one, at least individually on the podcast to talk through and get into your voicemails because it is draft season. And I thought it was an interesting exercise. So if you don't know how we did it was we broke it into three categories. For the New York Jets. And it's 10 guys. You can put the 10 guys in whatever order you want. But there was a trade-up category. There was a stick-and-pick category. And a trade-down category. Now, for me, the stick-and-pick category are guys that I'd be comfortable taking at pick number 10 or getting in a trade-down. The trade-down guys are really only options that I would consider in a trade-down scenario. Uh, And then there are the trade up options who I just don't think are going to be there for the New York jets epic number 10, if they were to uh, stick and pick. So let's get it rocking and rolling with, we'll work with the trade up guys first and then get into the stick and picks and then the trade down. So work our way from top to bottom. Uh, Marvin Harrison jr. Comes in at number one on my list for the trade up option. That is because I think he is just a special, special, special football player. Uh, adding him to this offense to pair with Garrett Wilson, which is a pair that we saw at Ohio State. Those Ohio State receivers, man, they've come into the league and been very, very productive. Uh, so I would love, love Marvin Harrison Jr. on this team. He is Forget the name. If if he was named Joe Smith, just because, you know, his name is Marvin Harrison, uh, I think people probably just read the name and go, oh, he's he's being overhyped because of who his dad is, right? Wrong. He is that good. He, in some classes, could be a number one overall player. I mean, Caleb Williams is going to be a lot of people's number one overall player in this one, but... the, The thought of adding Marvin for this team is just... Unreal. As I said, it would take this New York Jets football team to just a completely another level here uh, by adding a guy like that. He would instantly, I think, become the number one receiver. And I love Garrett. I am a huge, huge, huge Garrett Wilson fan. I view him as a number one receiver in the NFL. The Jets would have two number one receivers if they added Marvin Harrison Jr., Number two on the list, I put, uh, and this is, again, I'll I'll let you know when it transitions to the stick and pick category, but still in the trade up, I went Joe Alt and then Malik Neighbors as the two to three. Uh, And I put Alt slightly above Neighbors. If I was going to do a secondary tier, it would be like Marvin Harrison by far and away, number one, secondary tier of Joe Alt and Neighbors, neck and neck, but I give Alt the slight nod. So Alt, in my opinion, is someone who I think can come in and be a 10 to 15 year starter at left tackle and, you know, multiple Pro Bowls, all pro caliber, like someone who could be one of the best left tackles in the NFL. That's my own opinion on him. Opinions, you know, they, they vary. On these players on and on all prospects, you can't expect everyone to have the same opinion. But how I view uh, Joe Alt is uh, as a as a difference making, insanely difference making left tackle. And that's not a knock on Malik Neighbors, who I think is absolutely awesome. I'd be thrilled if the Jets traded up for Malik Neighbors. I just think Joe Alt again. I, I put a, a touch higher, not by much. 
not quite at the Marvin Harrison Jr. level. Again, I think there's uh, a, a drop, slight drop in prospect from that elite top tier to Marvin Harrison to the Joe Alton Malik neighbors tier. But three guys who are probably going in the top seven of the NFL draft. So that just goes to show you the talent that they are, right? Like non-talented players aren't going to go that high. And even if it's like, how about this may be putting it an even better way. They will be the first three non-quarterbacks taken. By, in, in my opinion, by, by far. Uh, Marvin Harrison, I think, comes off the board uh, first. I think Malik Neighbors probably comes off because the Giants need a, a wide receiver more than they need another offensive lineman. But then Joe Walt to Tennessee at seven is one that I do a lot. So in the trade-up spot, I have three guys, and my order is Harrison Jr., Joe Alt, and Malik Neighbors. Now, stick and pick. I have a few guys in the stick and pick category here. Uh, I'll count them out for you before we do it. I have one, two, three, four, five guys in the stick, uh, stick and pick spot. Now, I am also good with moving back and getting any of these guys in this group. Um, but if the Jets stuck in pick, I'm good with either any of these guys. And I think the controversial one is right at the top. So I'll do these uh, in, in pairs. Uh, I have Troy Fatanu at the top of my stick and pick coming in at number four on my list. And Romo Dunze at number five coming uh, in after him in the stick and pick. Now, I would be very excited about Rome Odunze. I don't want it to come across that I'm not a Romo Dunze guy. I just think there's a touch of a drop off from where Malik and Marvin Harrison Jr. are to where Romo Dunze is as a prospect. Uh, If he makes it to the New York Jets at pick number 10, I will say this. I think the Jets would take him over Fatanu, but this is my big board. This is my own personal preference. And if I was running the Jets, uh, and the board fell this way, and I couldn't do a trade back. My first option for me in a stick and pick scenario, I think, would be Fautanu. And a big reason why I like him so much is because of his versatility. He could play four positions on the offensive line and play them well, just like what Elijah Vera Tucker has done for the Jets in his first three seasons. that He's been ex- insanely versatile. And look at what has happened to the offense each of the last two seasons when Elijah Vera Tucker comes out. Troy Fatanu is in that similar tier. He's a late riser in the process because of how he measured out. Uh, many assume that he would, oh, he's, you know, at his size, he can't play left tackle in the NFL. He's going to have to play guard. Then his measurements and arm length come out, and you're thinking, okay, This guy measures out like he could be an offensive tackle. And then you get into the film, and you're like, this is really good film on a team that went very deep in college football last year, on a team with a lot of talented, talented players. I mean, think about an offense. How many Washington players are going to get drafted? Those are two guys right there, Fatanu and Odunze, both Washington guys, who are, uh, you know, four and five on my list of some of my favorite options for the New York Jets. Again, if it and if they ended up sticking and taking Odunze, I'd be very, very happy because I think he complements Garrett Wilson well. Um, and, you know, obviously the Jets need more at the wide receiver room. I just I love Fotanu's uh, versatility. So I have him uh, a touch above. Now, the next and I won't do I won't do two. I'll do th- I'll list off the last three guys in my stick and pick range. Uh, and that is Talisi Fuonga, Brock Bowers, and Olu Fashanu at six, seven, and eight on my list. Now, I feel like after the Morgan Moses trade, the Talisi Fuonga narrative to the New York Jets really slowed down because they filled the hole at right tackle, and then AVT is going to naturally slide back over uh, and, and play right guard. At least that's the assumption. I'm still a very big fan of the prospect. Like this is a name that 
was a, a favorite of mine doing mock drafts early on before free agency because of what he could be on the right side of an offensive line at either guard or tackle. Maybe someone who plays on the interior early in his career before moving outside. He hasn't played on the left side yet, but that doesn't mean that he can't do it. For instance, we saw Tristan Wirfs come into the NFL as someone who played exclusively on the right side in college. He is stellar at right tackle, one of the best right tackles in football. The Bucks move him over to the left side of the offensive line, and the transition goes well for him. So maybe that's Talisi Fuonga uh, and his production. I love the nastiness that he plays with. He fits kind of with what the Jets offensive line structure I think is going to look like after you know signing Tyron Smith, signing John Simpson, and trading for Morgan Moses. I think Fuonga also fits the bill of stylistically the offensive lineman that they like, but I don't have him as high as Fatanu because I don't know as much about his versatility as compared, uh, you know, Fatanu is more versatile, I think, than uh, Fuunga is. I like both guys a lot. I think if the Jets don't take Fuunga, he's still going to go, where are the Saints? 14, pick number 14, probably one of the last spots there. Um, uh, he's a prospect that I really, really like a lot. Um, and I have him over Brock Bowers, which is going to be controversial to a lot of people. I'm not... It probably sounds worse because of where he comes in on my list as number seven that I'm not a fan of Brock Bowers. But really, I'm going to be honest with you, even in the trade down spot, like there's nine guys, my top nine on my list. I would be very, very happy if the New York Jets came away with any of these guys. It's when we start to get into the 10 plus range where that begins to change for me, at least. Um, as in terms of options for the New York Jets, and when you consider uh, that the Jets, I, in my opinion, should go offensive line, like I'm not even considering edge or corner or safety or interior defensive line. I'm not looking at any of those spots. Uh, so all these guys, spoiler, are on the offensive side of the ball. And I do like Brock. I would be happy with that addition because of his unique skill set that he could add to a team. Uh, I think he could line up in the slot. I think he could line up outside. I think he could line up as an inline tight end or in the backfield. He's a good blocker. He's a good yards after the catch guy. Uh, he, and I think he would benefit with a, from a quarterback like Aaron Rodgers who has shown to lock into tight ends before, especially in the red zone. And the Jets have had one of the worst red zone offenses in the league and just one of the worst offenses in the league in general over the last few years. I'm okay with adding a weapon, and Brock Bowers is that. Don't just look at him as a tight end. I think they can get away with taking him because of what they have did in free agency um, and the state of the roster and where they are in this process of going for it. Uh, and then Olu Fashanu is a name that I think a lot of people have cooled on. He was at one point viewed ahead of Joe Alt as an offensive tackle prospect. Um, he's a definitely a, a left tackle in my mind. Uh, he doesn't really have that guard flexibility, so I bump him down a couple of spots behind Fatanu and Fuaga fit-wise. But he doesn't really play with that nastiness. He's more of like a pass-blocking technician, which... Believe me, I'm okay with the New York Jets adding a really, really good pass rusher, but a uh, pass protector, excuse me. In the run game, I don't know if his play style fits the direction that the Jets want to go, which is why I have him lower on my list. Not necessarily because I think he's worse than Fuunga or uh, Fuatanu, but fit has to be like fit has to play a role on somebody else's big board. I think he would be higher. For instance, uh, if I'm the Tennessee Titans, like Joe Walt to me, I would just take him because I think he's the best, but Olu, I would think would have a really good shot to be a good player at t in Tennessee because of who their offensive line coaches and stylistically how they're going to be. And you know, it's, it's scheme fit matters and Fashanu, I don't know if he fits the, again, fits the direction. I think he's a good player, um, but to me, doesn't fit that 
direction. Now, and again, any of the guys that I just listed off, I'd be okay in a uh, stick and pick scenario or a trade down scenario. If Odunze makes it to 10, I don't think he, uh, the Jets could trade down and get him. I think that's someone that they could, you know, just end up having to stay there and take him. Fuatanu is maybe you can move out of there. I think, you know, you can move back a few spots and probably still land him, but he's not even someone where I'd go, oh, that's a reach. If they took him at pick 10, that, that I wouldn't view it as a reach. So that's how I view it. These last two guys, I think if, the Jets stayed at pick 10 and took them over the guys that I had listed above. I would view that as reaching for nine and 10. Number nine on my list is a player that I really like a lot. Number 10, I have some concerns about, but there is definite upside. So let's start with number nine, who is Brian Thomas Jr., the wide receiver out of LSU, the other wide receiver. He is a burner which is something the Jets really don't have on this roster. Yes, Mike Williams can go down the field and win over the top, but Brian Thomas Jr. is someone who's like, if he gets, if he beats a corner off the line and gets going, he's going to fly and just Rodgers can lay it out. Uh, kind of like what I think they maybe they envisioned Miko Hardman to be in this offense. Granted, Hardman's role disappeared because the Jets then had to pivot to Zach Wilson. Uh, and Tim Boyle and Trevor Simeon, and it didn't work. But Brian Thomas Jr., I think, is someone who would really fit the bill for something that um, the Jets could use in this offense. Now, again, I wouldn't take him over the guys that I have listed above, but if they slide back six, seven spots, and they end up taking Brian Thomas Jr., to me, that's okay. And then the last guy at number 10 on my list is J.C. Latham, who is a very boom or bust prospect and uh, I think has some potential red flags but also has some green flags I'll start with the green I think people put way too much stock into one play that happened in the Michigan game and just view Latham as uh, not a good player because of one play and I don't think that's fair that's not the red flag for me with JC Latham and Latham's weight came in lower than I think a lot of people were anticipating but a player of that size, it's very rare to see them come into the league and have them and have them be long-term answers in the league. Is it possible? Sure. Of course it's possible. But maybe it's just because the Jets just went through this with Makai Beckton taking a boom or bust player and it blowing up in their face. I worry about the Jets being the team to take the gamble. Latham is obviously someone who's going to go in the first round. I just don't have him above any of the tackles that I listed off. I like Fashanu more. I like Fuunga more. And I like Fotanu more. I think they're more the three guys I listed and Joe Walt too, obviously. Uh, those top four guys, I think, are, at least in my opinion, more of a safer play. I, I don't think I don't view Latham as a safe player. I think he's someone who may have to move inside and play guard at the next level, which, again, granted, you, we could see Fotanu or we could even see Fuunga play guard at the next level. But I, I, have some, I have some concerns. And if the Jets moved down and, and they took him, I'd be like, okay, it's a, that's all right. But I feel a hell of a lot better about my top nine than I do that last 10. Some other names I thought about putting in that last spot, A.D. Mitchell, but I think they'd have to move back like pretty, pretty far to get into that range. So I didn't want to put him because I thought that was a little bit unrealistic, I guess. Um, but of realistic options, like I would still take Latham over Armarius Mims or uh, Jordan Morgan or um, Guyton, someone of that caliber. But I feel a lot better about the top nine. But having nine guys that you feel comfortable with in, with your team taking in a, in a first round, that's that's good. That's that's a good thing to have. That's a good problem to have because that means the Jets have options, which I think they do. It's not like you're focusing in on like, for instance, in in 2020 when it was okay. These are the uh, four offensive linemen who are going to go around where the Jets are, which one do you like the most kind of a thing. And then there was a the little bit of debates and like that was it. 
That's not really the case uh, in this spot. You can make a case for wide receiver. You can make a case for a trade up or a trade down or a lineman. There's a lot the Jets could do. Just but please, guys, let's not have it be on the defensive side of the football. All right, let's get into your voicemails. We're going to start off with uh, Elwood calling in uh, from Delaware. That's what it was from last week. Elwood is back. He wants to get into some Brock Bowers. He is not a fan. All right, hello. My name's Elwood. I think you should leave Brock Bowers where he's at. They don't need nobody that can't take a hit. Cause he get hit a couple times, he's done. He ain't going to be no good to him. That's all I got to say. Leave him where he's at. Really? So, all right, my name is Elwood, and I'm from Delaware. Thank you. No problem. So for me, I wouldn't think someone who's 6'4", 240, or 6'3", 243, according to NFL.com, can't take a hit. That is that's interesting. Now, I've heard don't take Brock Bowers because don't take a tight end that high, or don't take Brock Bowers because I would prefer one of the wide receivers or an offensive lineman. And I can respect that. I can think, okay, that's fine. The he won't be able to take hits in the NFL is a new one. I, I'm gonna be honest with you, Elwood. I have not heard that one before. I don't think that's something that I'm concerned about for, for Bowers. Um, yeah, the only thing I guess I'd be concerned about if the Jets took Brock Bowers would be their offensive line depth, but there's not really much concern about the player, for me in particular. Uh, Max from New Jersey up next. He wants to do draft stuff as well. He's got some Brock takes too. This is uh, Max and Toys, and I'm from home to New Jersey, and let's talk about the draft. So here's a prospect I want and a prospect I don't want. So first off, the prospect I do not want to get in the draft is Brock Bowers. And the reason why I say this is I'm not against the prospect. I'm not against the player at all. I mean, he's a good tight end, and it would be beneficial to get a tight end because, like, some of the top teams in the AFC, for example, have top tight ends. But in my opinion, I don't think – the Jets should draft Brock Bowers at all. And I think the reason is because I don't think you should just draft a tight end in the first round. And that's just my opinion. When was the last time a, a, there was a good tight end in in the first round? Like, I can't even remember. The last good one was maybe TJ Hawkins in, like, like 2019, but not against the player. I'm just against like, drafting tight end in general in the first round. And a prospect that I really like, and this is a third round prospect, Brendan Rice. I think. The Jets, if he's 72, and I played mock draft, he's third round. He's coming off like in the third round, still with our 72nd pick. And like if Brendan Rice is on the board, 100%. I want the Jets to get him. I think the Jets are making a huge, huge mistake at Brendan Rice if the Jets pass on Brendan Rice. Because, I mean, this guy's really good. I mean, and I'm, I get it. Like, I'm not saying Brendan Rice needs to be. Jerry Rice, I mean, he, if he has 50% of Jerry Rice's talent, he would be like an insane good wide receiver. What's your thoughts on this and go, Jeff? Okay, so uh, a couple things. We'll start with Brock Bowers. Um, I think that there's been some good tight ends. To, like Dalton Kincaid, I think, is going to be a good player. He had, what, like 600 receiving yards last year, which I know that's not like didn't necessarily pop off as – you know the uh, the an immediate um, impact, but he kind of was brought on slowly as the year went on. Six hundred and seventy three yards last year. Down the stretch for them, though, he was much more involved from okay from this point onward. Uh, from game seven to seventeen is where a majority of that production uh, took place for Dalton Kincaid. He had. 8 8 for 75, 5 for 65, 10 for 81, 5 for 51, 6 for 46, 5 for 38, 5 for 21. Uh, Then one, two games in a row where he doesn't start. Big games down the stretch again. 4 for 87, 7 for 84. uh, And then the playoffs went 3 for 59 and 5 for 45. Uh, So a productive player there. And I know like he's been annoying in fantasy, but... Like Kyle Pitts is a good player. It 
he had a moron of a head coach who wasn't using him. As a rookie, he had over a thousand yards as a 21 year old rookie, and then had 28 catches in 2022, and then 53 for 667 um, in 2023. I think with the right offensive staff and with Kirk Cousins there, I think he's going to put up big numbers. So, um, yeah, like you could want to go a different direction than Brock Bowers. That's that's fine. He's not my number one favorite option, but I, I don't think it's like, uh, I don't know. Again, I, I look at him as, and I think he's a really good player, and I think he'd be make an impact on this Jets team right away. For Brendan Rice, I like him a lot too. I don't know if I could go as far as say that it would be a mistake if they pass on a third-round prospect um, at that point. 4-5, 40-yard dash, solid, 6-2, 208. He's a bigger receiver than his dad, um, like just build-wise and not as quick, but I think he's someone who could come in and give you production um, right away. And I, I'm curious to see how much of a Caleb Merchant he was. Uh, it, it's tough for these legacy players because they have a lot to live up to. Uh, and maybe he's someone who comes in as a third round pick who comes in and is very good right away. It, there's been examples of that in the NFL before. Unfortunately, the Jets don't usually find those guys. They end up with our Darius Stewart or Chad Hansen and not, um, you know, a, a mid round guy. Um, Godwin or is a, is a good example. I believe he was a third round pick in 2017, that same year, eh, which is a little bit frustrating. Maybe rice could be that guy though. I mean, Max is high on him. Let's go to Constantine up next. He wants to get in on the new unis, the draft and all this fun stuff. Let's do it. Hey, Maddie, Constantine from PA. Hope everything's going well with you, bro. You too. Um, real quick, man, I had a feeling that the new unis the Jets were talking about were going to reflect the uniforms they wore opening night when uh, Rogers ran out on the field with the American flag. I love the old logo, uh, you know, the one that uh, was with the Jets when they had Ken O'Brien. I love that logo. I was always a Me big too. fan of it. So... Having that uniform with that logo, I'm really, I'm really excited about it. As far as uh, going, getting back to business, um, this draft is crucial to us. Offensive lineman, or uh, in my opinion, Brock Bowers. Again, I think he's going to be one of those types of tight ends that can uh, change a game, sway a game in your favor, yep. like a Gronkowski. You know, and uh, the bottom line is. Aaron Rodgers works better with the tight end because that way if he does get into some kind of trouble in the pocket, uh, he can have someone he can throw the ball off to, you know, including with the running back. So I think the tight end is crucial. Um, would love to get another wide receiver later in the round. Um, I think we've done a pretty decent job addressing the offensive line. And I think all in all our team is going to be uh, pretty good. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to jump on a bandwagon and say we're going to win a Super Bowl because every time we do that, it ends up coming back and biting us in the ass. But I will say that um, I think that uh, the season is lo- is looking it's looking better and better. Let's just see what happens on the draft. Um, as far as the uh, the rhetoric and all the other stuff that was going on with him wanting to be VP and all this other crap. I'm glad it's over with. We need to concentrate on football. I could care less what his political ambitions are. I want him to win football games. I'm a Jet fan, long-suffering Jet fan, (laughs) which a lot of us are, and I want to see something positive happen. And I'm always going to keep it real with you, so whether we agree or disagree, the bottom line is I'm going to keep it 100 with you. So I hope that we have a good season. I hope we have another good draft because that'll definitely help us out. And I hope we start the season off uh, with some wins. Now, with what happened with Buffalo, uh, that should be encouraging because they've gotten a lot weaker. Uh, Miami showed that they're not really that much of a threat in the playoffs, and New England's going to be, well, probably the worst team in football. So the Jets should win that division, hands down. Anyway, I know my time's about to run out, so J-E-T-S, Jets, Jets, Jets. Let's go. Constantine, I am, my jaw figuratively is on the floor right now. That might have been the most positive Constantine from PA call that we have ever received on Just Jets. 
Are we sure that's Constantine? I love the positivity. One, starting off with the uniforms, because I think they did a, a, a spectacular job. My first uniform or jersey order was the Garrett Wilson green number five. Garrett Wilson is my favorite player on the Jets right now. I have the green 17 of the last one, but with the number change, I wanted a, a, a current one. And, you know, I have a legacy white. It's the Aaron Rodgers legacy white. So I would say a Garrett would be my choice there. Uh, I don't know. I, I may end up doing more. Uh, I had some some jerseys last year. Like I have a Brees Hall white jersey, but it might be nice to do an updated Brees Hall. And there's, uh, I, 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 I'm trying not to spend all my money on these on these jerseys. They look really good. They look really really nice. Uh, and then, yeah, I I think it's going to be a really interesting draft. I'm very very excited, and we're just over a week out. You guys know the drill. You've heard me talk about it. We're doing the the main event uh, or the live stream from the main event for night one of the draft. And then after that, we'll be we'll be live streaming day two and day three. It's my favorite thing we do every single year. It's long. It's three long days, but it's a ton of fun to do. I'm really looking forward to it. Thanks again, Constantine. Let's go to Peter from the beautiful Hudson Valley. He's got uh, new unis at a mock draft. Hey, man. Peter from up in the beautiful Hudson Valley on this Monday tax day, but also new Jets uniform day. Wow. Loving it. Loving seeing all the the new combinations that they have out. I certainly think I'm going to get myself a uh, black alternate jersey at some point. I'm just not sure what number yet until we see what the results of the draft are. But speaking of drafts, um, so we are latest mock draft later in the day today, so I had... Uh, one of the clones, one of my own that I did recently. Sure. Um, I don't think they would trade down this low, but I traded down uh, with Seattle. It was pick 16 in the first round and was able to actually get three picks out of it. So you take 10 and give that up for 16, round 381, and round 4, 118, and then stayed and picked at all of those particular spots. Okay. One of them, uh, you'll see I was in agreement with your mock draft. Um at 16, Olu Fashana was available because Fatano oh, nice. was off the board. So, of course, we take the left tackle out of Penn State. This is where it gets a little interesting. Round three, pick 72, uh, Jalen McMillan, the, uh, one of the other wide receivers out of Washington, was available. Nice. So I took him. So I want to know your thoughts on that. Round three, pick one, uh, pick 81, sorry, Spencer Rattler uh, was available. He dropped a little bit, so we took him, the quarterback out of South Carolina. Here's where I agree with you. Round four, 111, Dwayne Carter, the defensive lineman out of Duke. Definitely a good pickup. Round four, 118, again, from the trade from Seattle. Um, Malik Washington, who will help us in the nice. slot as a wide receiver from Virginia. Uh, round four, pick 134, uh, then took Braylon Allen, the big back out of Wisconsin. Uh, round six, 185, here's another one I'd like your thoughts on, uh, because it sounds like he'd be a good Swiss Army knife for the offensive line. Center, Hunter Norzad out of Penn State. Uh, and looking him up, he not only has um, snaps at center, but both guard and both tackle positions. So it sounds like he'd be the ultimate fill-in at any particular position on the line, even if it's a game or two here or there. And then the last two picks uh, in round seven, uh, again, to the safety, Kitten Oladapo out of Oregon State, and the edge to Dirk Johnson out of Mississippi. But you could take a Josh Proctor there. You could take a Kenny Logan there. There's a lot of other options that were available at that time. And, again, they're, they're swings, so you never know. You know, you, these guys could wind up being undrafted free agent pickups as well. So, let me know your thoughts on this, mostly on McMillan and also Hunter Norzod, and uh, it definitely fills all the needs for the Jets, I think, at this point. Um, but there'll be more mock drafts to come. And as always, go Jets! I love those uniforms! <laughs> <laughs> You're not alone there, Peter. I, I love them a lot, too. So, interesting mock draft, because you moved back. Uh, you don't get the second round pick, but you get a third and a fourth, and we're staying uh, and picking at those spots. I like McMillan. Uh, so probably gonna would I would think would slide in at slot. The my critique of it, not that I dislike, because McMillan, the honestly, the three Washington receivers, you have Odunze, Polk, McMillan, they're they're gonna have three receivers drafted in probably the top three rounds, which is. Uh, absolutely nuts. You all then you also go to um, uh, help me out. Who is the the next wide receiver? The Virginia 
the kid from Virginia, right? Malik Washington. They, I think, are slightly redundant because I think they could play similar roles. But the, to be fair, even though we may like both those guys, the chances of taking two receivers in round three and four and both guys hitting and being dudes, slim. So you're kind of like taking two lottery swings instead of just one because that's what it is like even even first round players are hard to draft as we know because you know how many times have we seen unfortunately the Jets miss uh on the at I was gonna say at at quarterback or on the offensive line but it's really goes beyond that um so the I'm very interested in the versatile center uh or just someone who's played all positions now granted there's probably a reason why uh, we're looking at someone who's a, uh, a a sixth round pick at that point, but I mean, versatility is so so vital for someone that late because I don't think you want to pigeonhole yourself into like oh this guy's only a right guard at that late. Because the chances on you hitting on that pick is small to begin with. But if he's not a versatile player, like you should be using those picks on athletic freaks, special teamers, or versatile players. So last year they did it with Koontz. We have no idea if Zach Koontz is going to be anybody or not, but just an absolute physical specimen. Rounding out your roster on special teams or adding depth on the offensive line and depth at multiple spots. That's appealing. I think this is a, a, a very solid mock draft. I'd be happy with that. Dwayne Carter, we, we agree on. Um, I, I think he's a very good run defender and has probably more pass rush upside than initially anticipated. You know, when I was watching him, at least. Um, he was someone that, you know, I wasn't, I guess, expecting to pop off the page as much as he did. I thought, oh, this is probably going to be more of a of a run-stopping guy. And that wasn't the case. So, yeah, I mean, played multiple positions, too, and uh, I like it. I like it a lot. Good job. Let's do Andrew from New York City next. He wants to talk weapons. Matt, what's up? Uh, Andrew from New York City. Uh, called in a few times. Called in a couple weeks ago when you were having a live show uh, when free agency was hitting and we were talking about wide receivers. Uh, that's going to be my topic again today. I know we've been talking a lot about the draft and wide receivers, all uh, Jets fans, about what we want to do at pick 10. Um so I'm just going to throw out a couple questions. My first okay. question is, let's say at pick 10 we, we stick with web, uh, with uh, offensive line, which I understand I'm, I'm of a Bauer boy. I'm a Bauer boy or trade up for a Dunze at 8 or trade up for Neighbors or Marvin Harris at 5. I'm, I'm a weapon. I would love to bring in a weapon. That's my point of view. But anyway, let's say at 10 we stay and take a lineman, which I also understand I'm not going to be mad at. Um, what do we do at wide receiver number three? I still don't love the idea of Alan Lazard getting targets, um, maybe because Rodgers is back and the offensive line is improved that Lazard can improve, but I really don't want to rely on him, especially with Mike Williams uh, coming off an ACL tear. So I, I'm not of the camp of uh, injury prone. I don't, I don't think just because the man tore his ACL that – He's automatically going to tear another one, but he might come off slow, exactly. and uh, it would be nice to have another target. So I would, I would be curious to see what the Jets do if we do go at pick 10, we do go linemen. What do we do at receiver? Is it a Tyler Boyd? Um, is it a trade back to get into the second round? I know that's a big possibility. I, I would like the idea of that if you were to draft a lineman at 10 or trade back and get a lineman and take an, a day two pick. So I'm just curious. Basically, my question is, what are your ideas at wide receiver? What do you think the Jets do at wide receiver if we do go lineman early in the draft? Um, thank you, and I'm so excited for this draft. Uh, if not Wednesday, next Wednesday, 
still more to talk about before this draft. All right, Matt. Have a good one. I appreciate it. Thank you so much for checking in with us. So, okay, let's operate under the assumption that they stick and pick at 10 uh, and it's an offensive lineman and then you're looking for wide receiver. Uh, I would not be opposed to still going after and trying to sign like a Tyler Boyd, but then also drafting someone. I mean, in the in the last call, we had Peter from the beautiful Hudson Valley, two guys he mentioned, Jalen McMillan out of Washington uh, and uh, Malik Washington out of Virginia, right? Did I say that already? Malik Washington and Jalen McMillan were the two guys. Malachi Corley is a name that could be there for them. Uh, you also have Brendan Rice out of USC, which is Max's favorite uh, prospect in the third round. Devontae Walker out of North Carolina. Luke McCaffrey, another legacy name in probably like the fourth round range. Um, who else? Taj Washington, USC. I think a lot of the guys are, are that I'm not bringing up are probably going to be gone by that point, which is like Lad McConkey, Troy Franklin, Ricky Pearsall, Xavier Leggett, Javon Baker, Roman Wilson, Keon Coleman, Jalen Polk. But I think that Corley, Washington, McMillan, Rice, Thrash, Devontae Walker, Luke McCaffrey range would be guys that you'd be looking at in the NFL draft at that point. Also, if you trade down and you're able to you know, potentially grab someone in round two at wide receiver, that's, I think, my ultimate preference. Let's close with PG calling in from Long Island. Hello, Matt O'Leary. PG from Long Island here. How are you, two sir? Two things. Number one, I am really looking forward to the 25th. We have a booth. Hopefully, we'll be within earshot of your analysis. Uh, I also hope they have good Guinness at the <laughs> main event. Uh, for me, when I'm out, it's either Guinness or usually subpar red wine. There you go. So either way, it will be fine. So, looking forward to that. Uh, I want to ask you I'm sure you saw um, Joe Blewett's analysis of the offensive lineman. He actually had an a article where he listed the um, different traits of them, and Joe Wall actually was the fourth offensive uh, tackle on his list. Uh, part of that was he felt, he called it mindset, but it really comes down to nastiness. Uh, he feels some of these other guys finish a lot better. He wants to see these opponents in the dirt. Uh, he believes that kind of, kind of, um, you know, uh, translates well into the NFL. Um, so I thought that was interesting. And obviously, you know, Joe Blue is uh, not perfect, but he does usually he's right more times than wrong. Um, so just wondering what your thoughts were on that. Uh, second thing is the debate between the skill player for the first pick as against the um, offensive tackle. In my mind, the, you know, this, this, this draft is a lot more um, heavy with the uh, later picks as far as the receiver, uh, not so much with the tackle. So, you know, you take a tackle, whether it's a trade down from number 10, or you take a stick at 10 and take a tackle, and then you pick up a, a receiver at number, you know, your second pick in the draft. Whether No, of course, I think if Odunze is there, then you take Odunze. Um, you know, Brock Bowers, that's another question whether you take him, but uh, all things being equal, if, you know, if you don't like Bowers and the Dunes is not there, take the tackle and get a uh, receiver later in the draft. Um, anyway, uh, your thoughts on that, and as always, go Jets. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, uh, so I don't disagree uh, with your thought process on there being more wide receivers in round two, round three. Uh, than offensive linemen that I'm comfortable with. It's a good offensive line class as well, but I think most of the talent, in my opinion at least, is is in the first round at tackle. Um, so I would go that order as well, line first, then weapon or wide receiver in the scenario that you laid out. Uh, at the main event, I'm sure they got to have Guinness on tap. We need to get a good Guinness on tap. I'm sure my, both my parents will be there uh, as well. So you can meet Mama and Papa O'Leary, too, for anyone going. 
Uh, and I'm sure uh, Big Dave will be having a glass of red wine. He's going to be my guess. Um, as for uh, the rankings on these offensive linemen, Joe, uh, Joe is a very big fan of J.C. Latham, and Latham has that nastiness to his game. Fuonga has that nastiness to his game. So I could see him being uh, more entrenched with guys like that. And the Jets, I think anyway, really like those styles of players. He doesn't like, I know he doesn't like Fashanu much, and I think it's because of stylistically how he plays. He's not as aggressive in the run game. Uh, and there are, you know, some flaws in his game. For Alt, I have a hard time coming up with uh, a lot of, of faults for, for Joe Alt. And I don't want to discredit uh, Joe Blewett's work. I think Joe does a tremendous, tremendous job. You are right. He is wrong. Uh, right. Excuse me. He is right more often than he's wrong is what I was going to say. <laughs> Sorry, Joe. Uh, and I like him a lot. He's a good dude. He's came on. Uh, he's come on Talking Jets uh, a lot over the years. And uh, he knows he knows his stuff. He does. But um, I, I don't I don't agree with him on that one, uh, which is fine. You know, you're not going to agree with you know every evaluation um, he views. Latham as a guy who is uh, higher and is probably down or lower on some of the other guys like uh, Fashanu and Alt in comparison. So let me know your guys' thoughts down below in the comments or on social media. Make sure to subscribe wherever you get the show, whether it's on audio form. We appreciate you audio-only people on YouTube as well. We are available every Wednesday. We'll be back next week before the NFL draft. That's going to do it. I'm Matt, and I'll catch you next time.